Many people think NSDR or Yoga Nidra are simply meditation with a body scan. That's not true. There was a statistically significant reduction in cortisol levels, the stress hormone, immediately after the Yoga Nidra practice. In this video, we'll learn the effective techniques to eradicate stress from our lives, allowing us to thrive with greater peace and harmony. Let's embrace this opportunity to improve our well-being and bring positivity to the forefront of our lives. Do NSDR once a day for either 10 minutes. If you have the time to do 20, 30 minutes or an hour, you will see even more positive effects. It has been shown in these research studies to replenish dopamine, levels of confidence, cognitive ability, etc., and sense of motivation. So non-sleep deep rest, NSDR, is an acronym that I coined because it encompasses a lot of practices that are not meditation per se, but that bring the brain and body into a state of relaxation and focus. So hypnosis is one variant of NSDR. There are other variants of NSDR. You can just look these up and you'll find them. And I think that they've caught on and that the, Google, um, the CEO of Google uh, is an avid practitioner of NSDR. This is why I'm a big fan of using non-sleep deep rest or yoga nidra. Because it has this amazing ability to reset your energy levels and focus. Whereas with meditation, many people find meditation hard. And part of the reason they find it hard is that it requires focus. NSDR is a state which is very calm and relaxing. You don't have to work too hard. You're just listening to a script. Dr. Huberman's teachings on NSDR yoga remind us that stress relief is within our grasp. By following the path of this calming practice, we can leave stress behind and experience a sense of peace and tranquility. Dr. Huberman's expert guidance will show us the exact steps required to achieve this amazing state of being. Let's embrace this opportunity to uh, prioritize our mental and physical health and cultivate inner peace in our lives. But those protocols are not meditation per se. They tend to, to have people defocus they are anti-focus practices, whereas meditation tends to be a focusing practice. Along those lines, a meditation practice that is one that is exteroceptively biased, where you focus on things that are outside your body, can be wonderful for somebody who tends to focus too much on their inner landscape and their inner narrative, et cetera, can help get them out of their head and body, which can be very beneficial. But for people that are not in touch with their emotions, aren't in touch with how they feel, it actually can drive them down the exact path that's wrong for them. Many people think NSDR or Yoga Nidra are simply meditation with a body scan. That's not true. Meditation is a focus exercise. Okay? Most meditations are focus exercise. NSDR restores energy through the dopamine system and newer data are starting to show that it can actually recover lost sleep. So if you're not sleeping enough, but to return to NSDR, AKA yoga nidra as a practice. Yes. It's been shown in laboratory studies in humans, by the way, to restore dopamine levels. There's another study lesser known from that same group that was published in 2011, uh, which is entitled dopaminergic stimulation enhances confidence and accuracy in seeing rapidly presented words. This was a cognitive task. They explored yoga nidra, AKA NSDR in the context of increasing striatal dopamine. They already knew that it did that. So that's great. They confirmed that result. But what they also found is that doing NSDR could restore confidence in cognitive ability and performance in these cognitive tasks. Okay, so this is a really powerful zero cost tool for re-upping or replenishing that dopamine reserve. Okay, so this is something to do every day, especially when you're not feeling depleted. I'm calling non-sleep deep rest, which include meditation, yoga nidra, and hypnosis. Non-sleep deep rest or what I hereafter we will refer to as NSDR, not to be confused with EMDR. I don't think I've ever heard NSDR, so I'm, I'm um, planting a flag for NSDR, non-sleep deep rest, as a way to reset one's ability to be awake after you emerge from NSDR, so to get some more wakefulness and ability to attend, some emotional stability reset, as well as make it better and easier to fall asleep when you want to go to sleep at night. Now, non-sleep deep rest does have some research to support it. There's a beautiful study done out of a university in Denmark that showed that this meditation and yoga nidra type meditation 
allows dopamine and other neuromodulators in an area of the brain called the striatum that's involved in motor planning and motor execution to reset itself. In other words, this NSDR can reset our ability to engage in the world in a way that's very deliberate in not to throw in another acronym, but NSDR resets your ability to engage in DPOs, duration, path, and outcome. So now you're probably rolling your eyes like, oh my goodness, the number of acronyms. But just bear with me because NSDR is so powerful because first of all, it doesn't require that you rig yourself to any device. It doesn't require that you take much time out of your day. It doesn't require that you ingest anything except air. And it can have so many positive effects right down to the neuromodulator level. So I think in years to come, my lab's exploring this in collaboration with David Spiegel's lab, but other labs are looking at this as well. I think NSDR is going to start to play a more prominent role in what we call wellness and health, both mental health and physical health. So I encourage you to explore those practices. Again, NSDR can be done morning, afternoon, or evening, or middle of the night if you wake up and you need to get back to sleep. It can be very beneficial for that. But do it as a consistent practice so that dopamine reservoir remains tapped off. And as a third point, please be wary of, or at least aware of, these peaks in dopamine and the fact that layering in a lot of things that stimulate dopamine, while that can be wonderful for your wedding, a birth of a new child, going to a sports event with a bunch of friends, celebrating a big anniversary, yes, please do celebrate and enjoy the wonderful events of life. But please also understand and expect there will be a lull, a sort of postpartum low, maybe not full-blown depression, that follows that unless you incorporate some tools and practices to replenish that dopamine. So... The other form of neuroplasticity is not the neuroplasticity that you're amplifying by listening to tones or um, smelling odors in sleep, but the neuroplasticity that you can access with non-sleep deep rest. So NSDR, non-sleep deep rest, as well as short 20-minute naps, which are very close to non-sleep deep rest because people rarely drop into deep states of sleep during short naps unless they're very sleep-deprived. NSDR has been shown to increase rates of learning when done for 20 minute bouts for approx- to match an approximately 90 minute bout of learning. So what am I talking about? 90 minute cycles are these ultradian cycles that I've talked about previously. And we tend to learn very well by taking a 90 minute cycle, transitioning into some focus mode early in the cycle when it's hard to focus and then deep focus and, and learning feels almost like agitation and strain and then By the end of that 90-minute cycle, it becomes very hard to maintain focus and learn more information. There's a study published in Cell Reports last year, great journal, um, excellent paper, showing that 20-minute naps or light sleep of a sort of non-sleep deep rest taken immediately after or close to, it doesn't have to be immediately after you finish the last sentence of learning or whatever it is or, or bar of music. But, you know, a couple minutes after transitioning to a period of of non-sleep deep rest where you're turning off the analysis of duration, path, and outcome has been shown to accelerate learning to a significant degree, both the amount of information and the retention of that information. So that's pretty cool because this is a um, cost-free, drug-free way of accelerating learning without having to get more sleep, but simply by introducing these 20-minute bouts. Uh, I would encourage people if they want to try this to consider the 20 minutes per every 90 minutes of ultradian learning cycle. There you're incorporating a number of different neuroscience backed um, tools, 90 minute cycles for focused learning. It could be motor, it could be cognitive, it could be musical, whatever. And then transition to a 20 minute non-sleep deep rest protocol. And all of this is completely zero cost. Yoga Nidra and NSDR have been shown in a fair number of studies, not as many as been done on traditional meditation, or I should say third eye centered meditation or mindfulness meditation, but have been shown to replenish levels of certain neuromodulators like dopamine and reduce cortisol, reduce a stress hormone at least as much. And by my read of the literature, significantly more than with traditional meditation. And there's a nice paper that we will provide a link to which is entitled Yoga Nidra Practice Shows Improvement in Sleep in Patients with Chronic Insomnia, a Randomized Controlled Trial. Basically, this study looks at, as the title suggests, 
people with chronic insomnia, although the results certainly carry over or would carry over for people who don't have insomnia. The key result, I believe, in this paper, although there are many, is that, quote, salivary cortisol reduced statistically significantly after yoga nidra. What do I mean by that? There was a statistically significant reduction in cortisol levels, the stress hormone, immediately after the yoga nidra practice that we believe would be paralleled by a very similar, if not equivalent practice of NSDR. NSDR is a lot like yoga nidra, but removes a lot of the kind of, um, let's just call it the sort of mystical language and the intentions. It focuses more on the physiology and the body scans. There, you know, I want to acknowledge that yoga nidra has been around for thousands of years and was certainly there before NSDR. I also want to acknowledge that, and this was brought up also in altered traits, that sometimes language can be a barrier toward people embracing practices. In fact, this was recognized by John Kabat-Zinn when he created what he called mindfulness-based stress reduction practices, or MBSR, which was simply mindfulness meditation to reduce stress, but he called it MBSR, mindfulness-based stress reduction, as a way to bring it into the clinics that would otherwise perhaps be averse to something called mindfulness meditation. Again, this gets more to the sociology and the cultural aspects than it does to any specific utility of one practice versus another. Here's the takeaway point. If you want to get better at falling and staying asleep or falling back asleep if you wake up in the middle of the night, or if you are generally challenged with sleep issues, an excellent behavioral practice for which there are terrific data, meaning data that show that a stress hormone cortisol can be significantly reduced as well as certain neurotransmitters can be replenished as well as, and this is key and covered in this paper that I mentioned a few moments ago on yoga nidra, that the total amount of sleep that you need can be reduced at least somewhat. Well then yoga nidra or an NSDR practice done frankly any time of day is going to be beneficial. Nowadays I do NSDR or a Uh, reverie sleep hypnosis almost every day. And I tend to do that, as I mentioned, in the early afternoon hours if I'm feeling kind of sleepy. Because even though I optimize my caffeine intake, timing, etc., I tend to get a little sleepy in the afternoon. Most people get a little sleepy in the afternoon. Some of that is related to hitting that peak of body temperature. And you might think, wait, I thought high body temperature is associated with alertness. And it is, but right as you crest that high body temperature and your body temperature starts to drop, there's a tendency to be a little bit sleepy. So some of you might opt to take a nap in the afternoon. Should you nap? Should you not nap? That's a question that I get asked a lot and that I asked Dr. Matthew Walker when he was a guest on this podcast. Here was his answer and here's what the data support. It is fine to nap in the afternoon, but don't nap so late in the day or for so long that it disrupts your ability to fall and stay asleep at night for your major sleep bout. Okay, so naps are fine, but don't sleep so long during the day or too late in the day that it disrupts your ability to fall and stay asleep. I should also say you do not have to nap. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon that happens on these podcasts and on social media where we'll talk about naps and the fact that naps are great and Don't make them longer than 90 minutes. But then all the non-nappers get really worried. Like, wait, am I supposed to nap? I don't like naps. I wake up groggy. You do not have to nap. In fact, if you can make it through your whole day without napping, great, more power to you. But if you do nap and you find that naps serve you well, keep those naps shorter than 90 minutes for reasons related to ultradian cycles and so forth. And make sure that you don't nap too late in the day that you are then staying up too late at night and having a hard time waking up the next morning. I will say that for a lot of people who do not like naps or that find they wake up really grumpy from naps or groggy from naps, I encourage you to try the Reverie app, try an NSDR script, try Yoga Nidra, try something of that sort for anywhere from 10 to 20 to 30 minutes. I tend to do this every day now. I'll just lie down and I I love Yoga Nidra. I love NSDR scripts. I love using the Reverie app, in particular the portion of the Reverie app that gets you better at sleeping. It really is beneficial for me because it serves as very replenishing while I'm doing that hypnosis, but it's also gotten me much better at falling and staying asleep and falling back asleep in the middle of the night. So this critical period throughout the day is one in which most people are doing a lot of stuff. They're emailing and picking up kids and they're exercising and they're commuting and doing all sorts of things, taking phone calls and Zooms, etc. But if you can get that period of deep relaxation through a nap or NSDR, That's going to serve you well. There are two studies out of Denmark that have explored 
yoga nidra in the context of dopamine. The first one simply involved having people do a yoga nidra practice. Again, this doesn't involve any movement, but it involves people, potentially you, doing anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes, although there are now data showing that as short as 10 minutes of a non-sleep deep rest, aka yoga nidra protocol, leads to dramatic, really dramatic increases in striatal dopamine reserves. So it essentially is replenishing the dopamine reserve pool. This is why I'm such a fan of using NSDR, aka Yoga Nidra, at least once a day, and especially under times when you're engaging in a lot of high output. And when I say, especially at times when you're engaging in a lot of high output, this is a mistake many people make. They push, 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 they're in pursuit of a goal, then they hit that point where they're exhausted, then they start doing all the dopamine reserve pool replenishing tools, such as Yoga Nidra or NSDR. The real key is to always tap off that or refill that reservoir once a day before it's completely depleted. Now this gets into some of the biochemistry of dopamine and the relevant circuits, but it takes a lot longer to restore the dopamine reservoir. Think of it still as a wave pool, but that reservoir from a place of complete depletion than it does of partial depletion. So there's an asymmetry in the way this is done. So it's not as if, you know, you drink a glass of water, you fill the glass of water at a certain rate and it fills up to a certain level and the rate is constant. Think about it as once the level of dopamine in your reserve is depleted past a certain point, it takes a lot more effort, much more sleep, much more NSDR, things of that sort to replenish that reservoir.